Greetings and salutations gamers, my name is Kyle, also known as Gamers Weekend, and welcome back to the Dark Souls Challenge. Last time, we took on Dark Souls Remastered with only consumables, which started out strong and ended with the hardest boss fights we've encountered to date. But today, it's time to switch out the fire bombs for fire balls for Dark Souls 2 with only pyromancy, and this one's gonna get interesting. There's some foreseen roadblocks that aren't as bad as we thought and some unforeseen challenges in our path, but before we get into any of that, let's go over the rules. For this challenge, we can only deal damage using Pyromancy. That means no weapons or other magic types are allowed to deal damage at any point during the run. Any other equipment is fair game such as shields, rings, or any other non-damaging equipment we can get our hands on. As always, we'll be going for every boss in the game, and no major glitches or sequence breaks are allowed. And one last thing before we get started, we are getting closer and closer to that 100k subscriber mark by the day, and it would mean the world to me if you'd just take a second and press that subscribe button. And that's about it. I hope everybody's having a lovely day. Without further ado, this is the Dark Souls 2 Pyromancy Only Challenge. We start off by naming our character Azula, after the character from The Last Airbender, and moved on to character creation. Unlike Miracles Only, there's no class dedicated to Pyromancy this time around, so we choose the Cleric starting class for its stats and select the Healing Wares for our gift. Once again, we start out without any Pyromancies or even a Catalyst to cast them, so we need a plan in fast if we're going to make any progress. First, we head to Majula to grab some starting items and the Blue Seal from the Blue Covenant before heading to Hate's Tower. Thankfully, as tricky as our position is, it's not going to be impossible. But in order to get access to any kind of damage, we're going to need a lot of souls. There's two main ways to collect the number of souls we'll need. We can either farm souls, most likely using the path along Hades Tower to bait the Stone Knights into falling, or by using the Dragon Rider's Jab Attack to bait him into falling to his death. The latter is the faster method, and for anybody concerned on how hard Pyro only Dragon Rider is, we're fighting two of them later. Using the souls from Dragon Rider and a soul we picked up in Hades, we purchased the Silver Cat Ring from Shalakwar, and combined with the Blue Seal's bonus health, we can take the plunge into the pit in Majula. We have more than enough HP to survive the first few drops, and with the punch trick we can safely skip the vanguard fight for now. We make sure to grab the sublime bone dust and the token of spite before arriving in the gutter. Dream, where's the Estus shard again? After grabbing some new duds, we collect a Jaeger and French of boar and make our way to this set of pots which contains the dark pyromancy flame. That's the first part of our progression puzzle down, but we still have no spells to actually cast with it. We'll address that in a moment, but first we grab a second Bagrant Yancha 4 on our way to unlock the Black Gulch. With two branches in hand, we can free Roseveth, which not only opens up the Shaded Woods, but also gives us access to her as a shop. And as luck would have it, she's going to be our main Pyromancy teacher for this run. Shaded Woods access means a lot of good things before we even need to touch her shop, starting with an Estes Flask Shard next to the first bonfire. Then we can run into the Shaded section to collect the Chlorinthy Ring plus one for stamina regen, the Clear Bluestone Ring plus one for the spellcasting speed bonus, and a run up to Vengarl's head to grab a nearby Fire Seed. Dark Souls 2's Pyromancy Flames are all upgraded using Fire Seeds, which are a special upgrade material that can be found in key locations like Estus Flask Shards. There's a way to farm them later on in the game, but we'll burn that bridge when we get there. Using the Dragon Rider's soul, we can get enough cash to pick up Poison Mist and Fireball from Rosabeth before convincing Lycia to Miracles only the rotating door. With access to the Huntsman's Cops, we can get a second Sublime Bone Dust as well as another Fire Seed at the Undead Purgatory. Our Continental Jog has resulted in a lot of surplus souls, so we can spend them back at Majula to get ourselves another Attunement slot for a second spell. Next stop on our world tour is back to the Black Gulch, where we somehow die while still having health. Thank you, Dark Souls, and then it's time to head into the rotten boss fight. So grab another fire seed. Yeah, there's no way we're taking this guy on quite yet. One more stop by the Shaded Woods to grab the Lion Mage armor set, which will give us even more spellcasting speed, and then into the path towards No Man's Wharf to grab another Sublime Bone Dust and an Estus Flask Shard. In No Man's Wharf, we grab yet another fragrant Frange of Four before finally heading into the intended first area of the game, Forest of the Fallen Giants. There's a few things we need to cross off here, but first is to head to Kale to get a mansion key. Afterwards, we ask him to take a deep breath before he, uh, 
get some rest so we can grab his helmet. We'll need this for later. In the meantime, we can collect some amber herbs before finally taking on a boss, the last giant. Most people would think of fire as the main source of damage for pyromancers, but anybody who's ever been through the gutter knows that Dark Souls 2 poison is very dangerous, and as luck would have it, that poison goes both ways. Poison Mist alone would make short work of this boss, but combined with fireballs we get a very quick victory. Using some of the souls on our inventory and the souls from the last giant, we get enough to purchase the key to Leningrass shop as well as another Jaeger Niach of Yore. This is well above 10,000 souls which prompts Melenja to give us the Silver Serpent's Ring plus one. From here we head back to Stab in Tree Land to pick off Falcon. His demise will net us the Sunset Staff, which is another item that isn't immediately useful but will have its purpose later. However, now that he's gone, Melenja will sell us his hood, which not only adds an additional cast to all equipped spells but also increases our faith and intelligence by one. Pyromancy in this game scales off of both, so it's overall a very efficient item for our head slot. Next up is to face our Stalker ex-boyfriend. What better way than to poison- wait, am I allowed to make that joke? And what better way than to set him on fire? Holy crap, that's even worse. What better way than to, uh... After arriving in Lost Bastille, we grab the Dull Ember before heading back to Rosabeth to pick up Fire Orb and Combustion. A few more level ups later for a 2 min slot 3 and we head under the mansion for our 5th Estus Flask and then onto Zero Dude's docks. This is where we can take on the Flexile Sentry, who is also very susceptible to poison. The double shark goes down and we can grab the standard Pyromancy Flame as well as an additional set of fireballs. Afterwards it's another trip back to Majula where we can spend some boss souls to grab Rosabeth's 3 fire seeds and ascend the standard flame all the way up to plus 6. Now we're rocking some real firepower. Afterwards, we head back to the Grave of Saints to take on the Vanguard. At this point, Combustion one-shots the rats and it isn't too long before we defeat the leader. Another boss down, but more importantly, the Vanguard soul to our name. This is going to be very useful quite soon, but we've got to make our way to a certain boss smith to do anything with it. That means next up on the list are the Rune Sentinels. I'm not even sure if these things are living organisms, but they can be poisoned apparently. So organism or not, it doesn't take long for them to stop living. A quick run through the Bastille later and we can free straight of Alaphis. This sorcerer is going to be a big improvement to our run in a few ways. First of all, we can trade the Vanguard Soul for Toxic Mist to increase our Ghastly Ghastly? To increase our Ghastly Deadliness, and then pop another soul to pick up Flame Suave. This is a fire spell that has a short windup before detonating into a large explosion. Spoiler warning, it's pretty strong. We make sure to equip Toxic Mist at the Synergize Bonfire before we head before we head down towards the Lost Sinner. On the way, we can demonstrate the power of Toxic Mist on another Double Shark dude. Not only is Toxic a stronger version of Poison, but it counts as a separate status condition. This means we can have both ticking at the same time for massive damage. After lighting the side torches with some flame butterflies, it's Lost Sinner time. She can be inflicted with Toxic and Poison, and it's not too difficult to keep her in the gas to build up the status. A fairly quick fight leads to Lord Soul number 1. Back in Majula, we can give Malin 10,000 souls in order for his shop to upgrade. In this state, he'll sell boss armor, including the Lost Sinner set. Most importantly are the Penal Handcuffs, which will increase the power of Pyromancies. <laughs> Penal. Now we have the Faith and Intelligence combination of 24, but we won't quite cap out until we hit 60. Still got a long way to go on the scaling side of our damage, but we can get some more direct upgrades in the form of new spells. That's going to require we take out the Executioner's Chariot first. The run-up is nothing too special with Flame Swath's one-shotting Necromancers, and the Skeletal Horse is somehow susceptible to Poison and Toxic. Not even sure this thing has lungs, but I'm not going to complain. In the Purgatory, we can use the Token of Spite to join the Blood Covenant. As long as we're a member, Tijigren will sell us three new Pyromancies, Firestorm, Great Combustion, and Fire Whip. All three of these are going to be super useful throughout the course of the run, especially Fire Whip. Time to head back to the Shaded Woods to take on Scorpionus Nascar. Not only is she weak to fire, but by continuously baiting out the Tail Swipe attack, this boss turns into a total joke. Not long after that, we... Okay, I swear to God, writing jokes for this video is a minefield. Church. Fire. Poison. There is literally no way this joke ends well. So let's something else on fire that will please everyone. Like spiders. Hitting the Duke's dumb refrigerator's head isn't too awfully difficult, and her weakness to fire makes this nice and simple. Lord Soul number 2 is ours. 
We make sure to pick up the Brightstone key off of the Duke, and then make a second run through the cove to grab another Fire Seed and Great Fireball in the Black Knight Greatsword chest. Great Fireball is yet another very powerful Pyromancy we'll be adding to our repertoire. It's about time we finally head back to the Black Gulch and take on the Rotten. In Dark Souls 1, we had the Fire Boss of the Fire Area who was weak to fire, and now ladies and gentlemen, I introduce to you the Poison Boss of the Poison Area that can be poisoned. I honestly have nothing else to say about this. The Rotten can be poisoned. Just give me the Lord's Soul and get me out of here, please. Back to Lost Bastille for another Estes Flask upgrade where we get Lingering Flame off of one of the Jailers. I try it out on Rat Authority back in the doors of Pharos, but it's not quite my style. We'll put this on the back burner for now and deal with Rat Authority with our usual fire spells. With only one Lord's Soul left, it's time to start heading towards the Iron Keep. First boss in our path is the Skeleton Lords, and for once we've actually got a small challenge. Not only are they immune to our poison spells, but the room is covered in water. In Dark Souls 2, wet creatures, get your mind out of the gutter, take increased damage from lightning attacks, but have increased resistance to fire damage. As a spellcaster who's relying on fire right now, that's some pretty bad news, especially when there's a lot of skeletons and we have somewhat limited spellcasts. Thankfully, we have access to Firestorm and large area of effect magics like Flame Swath. It takes some fairly careful positioning, but we slowly but surely clear out the Bone Bros. In Harvest Valley, we can pick up yet another Fire Seed before baking ourselves a Forlorn for 4 seconds at 20,000 degrees. Next up is the Covetous Demon. Nothing interesting happened, so I decided to look up the definition of Covetous. A great desire to have something that belongs to someone else. Good to know I haven't been like that this run. Surely I'm living with a guilt-free conscience. After burning the Earthen Peak Windmill, we find out that Fire Whip can stun lock Dollar Store Medusa and ride our way up to Bowser's Castle. You know, the place that's covered in fire and lava, that I now have to beat, with a fire build. Help me. We start off with our usual Sharon and Dennis shenanigans before heading into the keep. It doesn't take too awfully long to run past the enemies here, and we make our way to the Smelter Demon fight. This thing probably should have been a hellscape for our run, but apparently this thing has lungs, because it can be both poisoned and toxic. Good thing too, because its fire resistance is absolutely cracked. A few deaths later and we slowly, painfully slow if I may, make our way to the Old Iron King. Once again, a boss that has very high fire resistance but can be poisoned. Guess that makes this one another slow burn. Ha 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 ha. Something something cars extended warranty and we get both intelligence and faith up to 20, which puts us at about 20 levels off of cap scaling. After finding out that the elephants are allergic to Britney Spears, we grab another fire seed with some great combustion beside Dringlayate Castle. We then grab another sublime bone dust and grab the key to Alayum Lois before practicing breathing exercises with Nameless Usurper and heading into the Twin Dragon Riders. Come to find out, there's something more toxic than copy and paste boss fights. Pyromancy. We make our way around to the desert sorceresses. 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 We make our way around to the desert sorceresses to grab another S's flask shard and grab a fire seed next to the key to the king's passage. This is our tenth seed and we'll max out our pyromanthe flame. Pyromanthe flame. Pyromanthe flame. Good god. This is our tenth seed and we'll max out our pyromanthe flame. Time for the Looking Glass Knight, and his reigning arena is immediately a debuff to our fire damage. Thankfully, our poisonous shenanigans are just as useful as ever, but that doesn't completely discount our pyromancies. Fire Whip has a massive amount of poise break, and can stagger the Looking Glass Knight out of summoning his allies. After a fun duel, the Looking Glass shatters. Finally, out of the rain and into the... Oh no... So the entire run up until this point has been about 4 hours of gameplay. That's a fairly nice pace. But then we ran into Shrine of Amana, which, by itself, took almost an entire freaking hour of my time! Thankfully, Kermit the Armored Vehicle served as a simple conclusion, and then something something your account has been suspended. We helped Nameless Usurper warm up a bit before heading into Velstat. Velstat isn't very resistant to fire, and is definitely down with the sickness. Doesn't take too awfully long before Bellboy goes down. 
Back at Majulan, we can purchase the latter miniature from Gilligan, another item we need for our odds and ends shopping list. In Aldia's Keep, we make sure to Bagram Branch of Boar the two hollows at the top of the stairs for two bonfire aesthetics, two wilted dusk herbs, and two Elizabeth mushrooms. This spot has more to it than it may initially seem. For now though, it's time to play with the dragon, who isn't very resistant to fire despite being a fire-breathing dragon. Dark Souls 2, I love you to death, but sometimes you baffle me. In Dragon Eyrie, we can finally claim the Aged Feather from Shanalot, which is not only unlimited homeward bones, but also the final item on our odds and ends shopping list. The next step we have to do is die. Simple enough. This will make us hollow and allow us to speak with Navlan in his bloodthirsty state. Here, he'll ask us to perform a series of assassinations and bring back certain items to prove we've made the kill. The list of items includes Kale's Helm, the Sunset Staff, a Ladder Miniature, and the Aged Feather. Once the list is complete, he will grant us with the Forbidden Sun Pyromancy, a spell that requires many attunement slots but is both powerful and very quick to cast. It's going to be a big help for late game bosses. I was also considering picking up Zuli's Garb for Rosabeth, but I wasn't sure if I was going to have to use it for later, so I instead grabbed the Astrologist gear. Shout out to Zuli, she makes pretty fun content. What better way to test our shiny new pyromancy than on an old friend of ours? Seems pretty effective to me, although definitely not feeling great about that number of casts. Speaking of bonus bosses, we can also clean up the gargoyles without too much effort before yeehawing our way through Dragon Airy. Something something student loan debt and onto the Dragon Shrine where we go through the Dragon Covenant duels before claiming the Ashen Mist Heart. This will let us take on the Giant Lord for the final puzzle piece of beating the game. He doesn't really stand much of a chance, and while we're at it, we head through the other giant memories to collect the giant souls. We head back to Black Gulch next to take out the giants for the fourth soul, and then head to Drang Lake Castle to begin the Dark Chasm side quest. Admittedly, they gave me a bit of trouble as a pyromancer, but in time we made it through to the Dark Lurker. He takes massive damage from fire spells, and after the split, Forbidden Sun puts in tons of work. The Dark Lurker goes down. In order to take out Vendrick, we'll need the final giant soul, which means it's time for the Ancient Dragon. And look at that damage. Even after exhausting our full arsenal of spells, he's barely a quarter of his health. We're going to need a new plan. The main thing I notice is that Toxic doesn't last very long, but it does in fact deal a sizable amount of damage relative to the amount of casts we need. At the moment, we only have one Toxic miss slot, but we can fix that. By burning bonfire aesthetics at the Grave of Saints, we can respawn the Royal Rat Vanguard. Every time, they'll redrop the Vanguard Soul, which can be traded with Strayed for the Toxic Mist spell. Eventually, we get enough souls to increase our cast to 25 Toxic Mists and head back to Chancellor Welliger to purchase his Wilted Dusk Herbs. These are very powerful spell replenishment items that'll help us out a lot in the coming fights. We can also get a bunch of upgrades to our armor from pickups throughout the run and from Titanite purchases through our blacksmith. Next stop is to head into the Fire Lizard Pit to grab the Heavy Iron Key for DLC 2 and the Flame Quartz Ring to help negate some of the Ancient Dragon's Fire Breath. Time to make a real crack at the Ancient Dragon again. We go in with 22 Toxic Mists, Fire Whip, and Firestorm. I thought the other two fire spells would be useful, but ultimately didn't achieve much. We use three Toxic Mists every opportunity we get to inflict Toxic on the Dragon. By the time we back off and avoid a Fire Breath and get back within range to cast again, the first Toxic has worn off. So by getting into a pattern of going in and out with applying Toxic, we'll slowly but surely be able to grind down his health bar. After about an 8 minute boss fight, the Ancient Dragon falls. With all of the Giant Souls collected, Vendrick is the next major boss on the list. Thankfully, his fire resistance is nothing compared to the Ancient Dragon. It's only a few burns before the King falls. The DLC is the final set of road stops before the end game, but I'm not feeling too confident about our chances at the moment. There's some extra levels and items I want to pick up before heading into the gauntlet. First thing to do is to head to Aldia's Keep. We can burn a bonfire aesthetic at the bonfire in the shack to trigger two important events. Aslatil of Mira will spawn every aesthetic, which will grant us a human effigy every run, but more importantly, the fragrant branch hollows will respawn every aesthetic without the need to reuse the branch. Every bonfire aesthetic will get us two bonfire aesthetics, two Elizabeth mushrooms for great healing items, and two more wilted dusk herbs. Farming this spot for a while will give us plenty of powerful items to use throughout the DLCs.
Next up is to head back to Earth and peak and aesthetic Mytha back to life. Killing her again will grant us the Silver Serpent's Ring plus two, and then we can head back to the Undead Purgatory to bring the Chariot back. Killing New Game plus Chariot will net us the Clorinthy Ring plus two to give us even more stamina regen. Next up is to farm the Giant Lord using Bonfire Aesthetics. Not only does he have a respawning aesthetic in his arena, but if we needed additional fire seeds, one respawns next to him as well as a divine blessing. We farm him until we get about 1.5 million souls, die twice and lose all of them, and then farm again until we've gotten to 1.5 million souls again. This will let us get about 40 more levels, which will hopefully give us enough power to take on these late game bosses. We make sure to max out the scaling on our pyromancies, give ourselves another attunement slot, and pump our health and endurance. If I'm being honest, not too confident about going into these DLCs, but we're about as upgraded as we can get without actually going in first. So ready or not, it's time for the final gauntlet. Things this time around are going to happen in a bit of a weird order. Let's start us off by heading into Aleum Lois to take on Ava. She can be toxic, which is nice, but straight damage seems to be a bit more effective this time around. Some of her moves can cause her to dodge out of the flame swap, but it's one spell that goes wrong out of many. The King's Pet goes down on the first try. The main reason we did Ava first was to gain access to the Fire Clutch Ring, the last major upgrade to our damage. It's not a massive upgrade, but it's going to be a necessary one. After having an epic duel of the flames with Jester Thomas in the Sunken City, it's time for Alana. She takes a surprising amount of damage from Flame Swath, but we have to watch out for her own magic as well. Thankfully, she starts us off with skeletons, so hopefully by killing them repeatedly we can stall out the bellboy. It ends up taking a couple minutes, but we manage to go the whole fight without having to worry about Bellstat. That's boss number 2 down on yet again the first try. It's time for a bit of Dragon Slaying. Sin's Toxic can be dangerous, but those Divine Blessings we farmed up are going to be very helpful to shake off his damage and toxins. The first go we give it fails due to a lack of timing and a nice combo from Sin, but the second attempt doesn't give us many issues. The Dragon is slain in two attempts. The Goon Squad is next up to bat, and this time our usual strategy would heavily backfire. Leading them down into the pond would significantly increase their fire resistance, so this time around we just kite the two melees back and forth in front of the door. We take a bit of damage, but nothing Estes and those Elizabeth mushrooms we've been farming can't fix. One attempt later, and the goons are gone. Back to Frozen Land, and next up on my list is the toboggan ride down to Christmas Land. The King's pets are just copy-paste of Ava, but annoying ones at that. When both are out at the same time, it's hard to find opportunities to attack especially when they lock us into a corner. First attempt was a mauling, but second try and we give the cats a good scalding. Lud and Zalin go down. Next is a journey into Broom Tower to try and finish off the easiest bosses on our list, and it's Mr. Blue's turn to Daba D Daba Die. Toxic works on him just like his fiery brother, and also like his brother, he's not at all difficult to avoid his attacks. A couple minutes later and we're done with the copy paste. Hopefully by now FromSoft has learned not to copy paste things so blatantly it hurts my will to go on. As it stands now we've got 3 bosses left and they've all got me worried. Particularly one Fumi boy but I think he's going to be the most major roadblock. If we can take him out then I'll be fully confident to finish off the run. Raim is heavily resistant to fire damage. Like immensely resistant to fire damage. He's going to take many times the fire spells we have stockpiled to even do considerable damage. A bit into the fight, I began to realize that wasting time on the slower, more dangerous spells was going to just make things harder. Instead, I used up my great fireballs, flame swaths, and forbidden suns before restocking and repeating the cycle. It's not the longest fight on the planet, but certainly the longest DS2 fight we've had so far by a pretty big margin. 14 minutes and 10 seconds later, we defeat the Fume Knight on our first try. One more boss in Broom Tower before we're done here, and it's Sir Alon. The first try I definitely got caught off guard more times than I like to admit, and lost it very quickly. Second try goes a lot smoother though. I fall back into my Alon slaying rhythm fairly quickly, and after a fight that lasts just over 5 minutes, Sir Alon falls on attempt number 2. 
Ivory King is the last boss in our gauntlet before we can finish off the run. First it's a slog against the Burnt Boys, but it's not too awful. They deal enough damage to be concerning, but not enough to be alarming. We on the other hand can deal plenty of damage, and due to the fact that we've stockpiled so many spell recovery items, we don't have to be very conservative. With the squad down, it's Ivory King time. I was fully expecting him to have pretty good fire resistance, but was caught off guard by how much damage Forbidden Sun dealt. He wasn't too much of a challenge, and one fast attempt later, the Ivory King falls. After collecting the final crown and getting Vendrick's blessing, it's time to head to the Throne of Wand. It all ends here. Watcher and Defender aren't much of a challenge, but at least they're not too awfully boring. First one down. With the crown's anti-curse blessing, Nishandra's not too awfully threatening. Not only are toxins effective, but so is fire magic. She's not much of a challenge and goes down fairly rapidly. One final battle, and it's Aldia, the flaming scholar himself. His fire resistance while his defenses are down aren't anything to be worried about, and what a more fitting way to end a run than with a boss who is susceptible to toxins. It's not too long before the scholar is slain. And with that final duel, we have officially beaten every boss in Dark Souls 2 Scholar of the First Sin with only Pyromancy. That was honestly pretty exhausting. DS2 challenges are very fun and this was no different. But funny enough as it is, I definitely went through a lot of burnout during this run. Thankfully with Elden Ring's release, we'll be able to add it to the challenge set. And I've got a bunch of other game challenges that I've got in the works as well, so stay tuned for that. Before any of that comes around though, I'd love to hear what kind of challenges you'd like to see. Leave your suggestions either in the comments section below or in the suggestions channel of my Discord. I'm always happy to see what kind of wacky things you guys can come up with. In the meantime, if you enjoyed this video then please give it a thumbs up, pop that subscribe button, and ring a tingling that little bell to be notified whenever I drop another video. You can also join the community Discord, link is in the description below as always. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll catch you gamers on the flip side. Later!